Today we're going to be talking about this. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model and why I chose this over something like the Mac Mini and specifically the Mac Mini M1. This is actually the original Intel Mac Mini of this generation. So I think this is the 2010 Mac Mini. I used this Mac Mini for I guess now 11 years as a file server and as a home theater PC. Usually what I have attached to this is like a Drobo and some hard drives. When my wife and I come back from a shoot, we'll dump stuff onto this. This is kind of like our big home server that has all our files for all of our work and everything. But as the Mac Mini hit its 10 year mark last year, I knew I wanted to get it replaced, get it modernized, get it updated. And as I started looking at the M1 Mac Minis that have just recently come out, I realized I didn't want to pay $700 for what's basically a glorified network share that I need to be able to plug hard drives into. So this video is going to be about comparing that decision to purchase the Raspberry Pi 4 over the M1 Mac Mini, uh, specifically for like a file and media server. But as I've been looking into this more, I've actually been thinking about this little computer that I got for with the case and a power brick with it for like 99 bucks, 100 bucks. Could be a, a great everyday desktop computer. You could even do some light creative work on it now, especially with like Lightroom, Creative Cloud, going in the browser and stuff. That's a real possibility. So I think, I think there's a lot to this Raspberry Pi 4 that um, is just kind of being overlooked, especially when you consider that this costs one seventh of the price of a new M1 Mac Mini on its just baseline. So let's look at the specs. First off, yes, the Raspberry Pi 4, if you get the power supply, the eight gigabyte model, and then this particular case, which I have here, which is the Flerk case. I'll link everything down in the description below so you guys can see how I built this. This was $99. Now the M1 Mac Mini starts at $699, roughly $700. Bucks. And let's look at what you get with that. Now on the Raspberry Pi 4, you get this Broadcom quad core, a 64 bit ARM chip at about 1.5 gigahertz, which is definitely no slouch, at least comparatively to the previous Raspberry Pis that have been single core, usually clock speeds measured in the megahertz, not even gigahertz. So that's actually well and nice. But of course the M1 Mac mini, we already know it is a beast of a machine with this M1 chip in it, the eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and then a 16 core neural engine. Yeah, that is a lot. And if you're, if you're looking to do desktop editing work or rendering stuff, that's going to help you out a lot. Now the Raspberry Pi, like I said, has eight gigabytes of DDR4, low powered DDR4 RAM built right in. The Mac mini starts at eight gigabytes of unified memory as well. So that's a pretty fair comparison. I think probably the bus lanes on the unified memory on that M1 chip are gonna be a little bit faster, but who knows how much faster. I found a 128 gigabyte micro SD card that I was able to use with the Pi from my existing photography setup. So that didn't cost me anything extra to throw in here, but if you were to buy it, maybe add another 20 bucks. And the baseline M1 Mac mini comes with that 56 gigabyte SSD storage, which is gonna be a lot faster than an SD card or a micro SD card. Uh, they both have gigabit internet. I was actually kind of bummed to see this on the M1 Mac Mini that uh, the Mac Mini generation prior to the M1s had had 10 gigabit Ethernet, and that was really interesting. As looking at like, hey, if you're going to build out a house, which we're looking at doing, and putting Cat 6A in there and doing a 10 gigabit network, especially for people like us who are creatives, moving files around in our home and using our home as our home office. Uh, that would be really awesome if I could do that 10 times faster. Kind of a bummer that that's not there on the M1, but then, hey, it makes it an even better comparison to the Raspberry Pi, which also has gigabit ethernet. They both have wireless built in. Now the Raspberry Pi has 802.11ac, which is the previous generation of Wi-Fi, which is still plenty fast enough. The M1 Mac mini has that Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax wireless, but luckily they both have Bluetooth 5.0, which is really low power, great quality Bluetooth connection for peripherals and connecting devices and things like that. The Raspberry Pi's power supply now is only 15 watts, which is super low when you compare that to something like the Mac mini, which has 150 watt power supply. Now for a device that's gonna primarily mostly sit in an entertainment center, serving up files and maybe if I throw on like a desktop operating system for my TV, some light web browsing, I will take the 15 watt power supply any day of the week. That means it's cheaper to run 
in the long term, especially when you consider that my previous Mac Mini had been turned on for about 10 years. And now that's the max operating power. The idle watt usage is usually a lot less, but that's still something to think about when you're building a device that's gonna be turned on for a decade. The Raspberry Pi has two USB 3.0 ports, which is a, a very welcome, I think that's actually what makes this even possible for me is to have those types of speeds to move data around from USB 3.0 over that board to that gigabit NIC. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that's that's the secret sauce for some file server stuff right there. And then of course the M1 Mac Mini is no slouch. It has these Thunderbolt USB 4 ports that can do up to 40 gigabit transfers, which is great, but good luck finding an external drive that can actually push that right now. That's mostly used for like display and video output type stuff. And it does have two USB-A ports that are 3.0 up to about five gigabits as well, just like the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi does have two micro HDMI ports. And both of those can support up to 4K60, which is, that's, that's, that's pretty nice. That, especially in a package this small, I was actually really surprised to see the, that they were able to even do that on this. So it's like, if you wanted to actually use this as a desktop computer, like, I mean, short of like rendering uh, large movie projects or doing like 3D rendering type stuff, this is no slouch. This is pretty good. You could watch 4K YouTube on this. That's, that's kind of nuts. You could watch 4K movie. Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty cool. Now the M1 Mac mini does have an HDMI 2.0 port that can also do 4K 60. You can do 6K 60 over one of those Thunderbolt ports that I mentioned previously. Kind of the only display you're going to do that on is the $6,000 cinema display or what is this? The Pro XDR display. That's not in the conversation for this. If you're looking at a comparison between a $100 and a $700 computer, a $6,000 display with stand, it's not in there, not in the conversation. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is, if it is, leave a comment down below and please let me know your life and lifestyle. I would I would actually love to know all about you if that's, that's something that you're into. <laughs> That'd be great. And they both have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So great if you need to do audio out or anything like that, you have that port. So I think there's three ways to look at this. Now, the way that I'm looking at these two devices, the M1 Mac mini base model, the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. I'm looking at it for a file and media server and maybe sort of like an HTPC type device. And I think the clear and away winner today now is the Raspberry Pi for this. The time of the Mac mini being underneath the, the TV or the media console in your living room is kind of coming to an end. I remember maybe five, 10 years ago, that was a really fun thing to do was like get a Mac mini and put it in your, your media console and have a full on computer at your TV. But now with most smart TVs being able to stream most things that you would normally have to in the past, go to a website to things like AirPlay and Chromecast for putting up web pages on your TV. If you need to share something like that, that use case has kind of been whittled away over the last decade. Now, the second scenario that I see and that I'm actually considering doing a video on. So let me know if that's something you'd want to see is looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 as an everyday desktop computer where you're doing email and you're doing web browsing and maybe working with some files and maybe even doing some like photo editing and like Lightroom on the web browser. If you're primarily a creative that's using mobile devices to, to take photos, take videos, and maybe you're doing some of that editing on your phone or most of that editing on your phone, but sometimes you just wanna be able to see those images up on a big screen or edit with a big screen on a desktop, I think this might be able to fill that category for a lot of people who at least I know who are mobile creators that are again doing a lot of that creation on their mobile devices but would like to have a desktop to come back to every once in a while to do some stuff. I think I would rather pay way less money and still get you know a 4k output on a great display and and just yeah I think this this could be it. The final scenario is is if you need a creative workstation. I think this is where the Mac Mini is what's punching above its weight. I would not buy a Raspberry Pi 4 if I needed like a media render farm or if I was gonna be editing in 4K on this. I just, I don't think you're gonna be able to get that out of this. I think it would be really frustrating to try to build a whole creative workflow off of something like this if, if you're doing like larger 
production type stuff. This is not gonna be it. But the Mac Mini is one of those things where it, the new M1 Mac Mini is definitely punching above its weight. Definitely something I think that would serve that creative workstation scenario. I'm gonna make a follow-up video to this showing you guys how I set this Raspberry Pi up as a file server. I, like I said, I had a Drobo connected to the Mac Mini. I'm gonna sled up um, some three and a half inch drives, some two and a half inch SSDs to this to build sort of my own file server array here at home. I'm gonna do a video on that. Let me know though if you would wanna see a video of me using this as sort of my everyday computer and uh, just to kind of see what I could get out of it. I'd throw like a desktop OS on here and just just play around, you know, and really see and feel that out. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Um, I may actually just do that just for the fun of it. But um, yeah, be on the lookout for uh, my file server video that will be talking more about how I set this thing up. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Stephen Foster. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and I'm honored by all of you who already have. Thank you so much. Please be kind both in life and in the comments below. Like this video if... Um, if you want to spread good vibes across the internet. That's the business we're into over here, you know? I think that's a good place to be. So thank you again so much, and we'll do it again soon. This case is pretty cool, though. I'm a fan. Like, look how tiny this is. Like, that's it next to my head. Like, it makes the Mac Mini look massive, you know? <laughs>